In this video, we'll look at the Contingency Restoration Analysis function. The relevant study case should be activated. Contingency Restoration Analysis provides a load flow study of a fault in a network, including each step of the restoration process. In distribution networks, the network is normally not meshed, and circuit breakers are only available at certain locations, so faults usually result in unsupplied customers. Depending on the fault location, additional switching operations are therefore required to restore supply to as many customers as possible. In contingency restoration analysis, this restoration sequence is determined automatically without having to define switch operations beforehand. Let's first change the colouring mode to show the different grids. The analysis will be carried out for grid 1, which is coloured green. Let's take a look at the Contingency Restoration Analysis command. During the analysis, load flow calculations are executed to check whether constraints are violated. The parameters of the linked load flow command can be adjusted if necessary. Contingencies are created for the faults to be investigated. This can be done automatically, although user-defined fault cases can also be supplied. In this example, the analysis will be carried out for all lines in Grid 1. On the Protection page, we must specify how faults will be cleared. We could allow faults to be cleared by any circuit breakers or use only switches with protection devices. In this example, we'll use all circuit breakers, as circuit breakers are available at the start of every feeder. On the Restoration page, Automatic Power Restoration can be selected. The options here are mainly the same as those used in Reliability Analysis. But an important difference is the setting of the main target. If Comply with Constraints is selected, violations of constraints are avoided during the restoration, but this may result in fewer customers being resupplied. The selection Maximize Restored Power, on the other hand, will lead to a restoration of power for as many customers as possible. The algorithm seeks to observe the constraints, but they may be violated if that's the only way to restore supply we will use that option. The constraints are configured on the constraints page. It's possible to specify thermal loading, voltage or feeder voltage change constraints and to define these either globally or directly in the elements. On the results page, limits can be set to manage the amount of data recorded. Now, the analysis can be carried out. We can see that the grid graphic has been coloured according to the success of the power restoration for each contingency. Due to the topology of the grid, it may be impossible to resupply some customers, for example if there is no alternative supply path that can be used. The purple colouring shows elements where power could not be restored after a fault. In most cases, this is because the neighbouring grids have not been modelled. Red indicates that power was restored to all customers, but constraints were violated. Brown would indicate that there were constraint violations, but also incomplete restoration. Where lines are green, power was restored to all customers without violating any constraints. Let's take a look at the contingency for line LN281. We can use the trace functionality to see what happens step by step. The first execution shows the base case load flow. The next step shows the state of the network after the operation of the protection devices to clear the fault. 
A second click on the Next Time Step icon shows the state at the end of the power restoration and also the load flow results for this state. The fault has been isolated and a resupply of customers from the neighbouring grid was possible. Standard reporting scripts are available via this icon. There's a range of different reports. We'll just run the contingency summary report. For contingencies that cause supply interruption, the summary report shows the number of customers whose supply is interrupted together with the total interrupted power. If there are customers who could not be resupplied due to constraints or due to the topology, their number and active power is shown as well. With a right-click on a contingency, the restoration report for this contingency can be shown. This shows the switches that tripped due to the fault, the switches that were opened to isolate the fault, and the switches that were closed to restore the supply to the customers. As could be seen for some of the feeders, the resupply fails in some cases, as not all neighbouring grids are modelled at the moment. Let's activate this variation, Contingency Restoration Analysis. The missing neighbouring grids are now modelled in a simplified way using external grid elements. When the contingency restoration analysis has been executed again, the improvement in supply restoration can be seen. This configuration, however, does not take into account any potential constraints in the simplified neighbouring networks. Finally, it's also possible to change the colouring of the results to voltages and loadings. Elements on the graphic are now each coloured according to the highest loading or largest and smallest voltage for that element, taking all contingencies into account.